We're starting off with the incorrect lighting from a video ago. I run all of my newly created unit tests and surprise surprise I pass them all. Something's gone wrong in my lighting calculations and I'm rummaging through my code to find out exactly where things went wrong. And there we have it. When calculating my intersection, I call get position. However, at this point, we are already in object space. With that small change, I now have a properly lit scene. Unit testing only works if you have the right tests. I run back and start implementing a more interesting scene, changing the location of planes, spheres, until I get something that shows off both shading and shadow. Without a real-time interactive scene editor, this requires considerable trial and error. I notice that my shadow algorithm is not per light. Instead, it will exit if any shadow exists for all lights. I move my shadow test to inside my light loop so that it is light specific. This requires some changes, making sure I pass the currently evaluated light into my lighting method. Still experimenting here, I place the light behind the plane surrounding the spheres, causing the entire scene to only be illuminated by the ambient component. This is a pretty good test to make sure the ambient lighting is actually functioning. Finally, I have something simple enough to show off the planes, lighting, and shadows, but I'm not quite finished yet. I want to play around a little after all that hard work. So I render out a higher resolution and also add in a second light source to make sure my shadows are working. And with that, I have finished Chapter 9. I sure wasn't expecting all that trouble, but I was able to resolve some small problems through all the unit testing I had to do. There was one small change I didn't record, and that was the switch from floating point numbers to doubles. I did this for two reasons. One, I had spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was wrong with my scene, and I was getting some noise at times, so I thought maybe it's a precision issue. Then finally, it's been just a real pain to constantly convert from float to double, since double's the default type, and that's the type the math class in C-sharp also happens to use. Why not just stick to doubles for now? We'll see if it's a good decision, and I can always go back in the future. If you're watching along, let me know how you're doing. Are you running into the same problems? Maybe something completely different? Or how are you structuring your code? I'll see you all next time in Chapter 10, where I need to implement patterns for my materials. So long, and goodbye.